Hello, I'm Phil. Hey, it's Jeremy. So today we're here to talk about stress fractures in the feet. So what are they and how do we fix them? So first thing, Jeremy, what is a stress fracture? So um, long story short, it can be like a little tiny like crack in the bone. Crack in the bone, yep. yeah. So a stress fracture, how is a stress fracture different from a proper fracture, like a compound fracture or a different kind of fracture? So that kind of fracture would be a complete break in the bone. So kind of like you can actually separate it. Yeah. Um, stress reaction, or what you said, is pretty much can be sort of halfway or just kind of quarter through way. Yeah, yeah. but the so bone is usually still lined up. Yeah, so yeah. it's not complete through the bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see a lot of stress fractures in our clinic here. Um, they're quite common because feet work pretty hard. So if you actually look at how much force you're putting through a foot just for walking, day-to-day -day activities, and then activities like running or jumping, Again, it's not hard to imagine why you get some, you know, excessive tissue stress and then possibly you know, injuries to the bones. So, um, stress fractures are common in a, in a bunch of different bones, but by far the most common are in the metatarsals here. So they're the ones just behind the toes, you know, at the front of the foot. And you can see them there; they're, they're skinny little bones. They, there's a lot of force going through them. For how for how narrow they are, they work, have to work pretty hard. Um, so, Jeremy, I'll pull up the, this one here. So, Jeremy, if someone has a pain in their foot, how would you work out whether it is or isn't a stress fracture? Well, when I present to the clinic, you can, most of the time, what they say um, usually tells most of the story, but of course, then we'll get them to wait there, so wait there, so like they're standing. Um, particularly if you sort of palpate the area, um, especially if they come to the clinic limping, then that's a good indicator. Yeah, yeah. Um, often the history is quite interesting. So yeah. sometimes the pain will be quite sudden. So, and there's, some, it's not, there's not usually a crack or a pop because the bone hasn't actually moved out of place, but usually it's, uh, I was doing F45 class, I was, I, was, I was walking the dog, I was doing some garden work, and then all of a sudden my foot started to hurt quite a bit. And, and it's, um, as with any bone injury too, I know you see this too, Jeremy, the foot, there's quite a lot of swelling. The swelling is very common with, with this injury as well. Um, and as you said, palpating, which basically means poking. <laughs> we can poke it and it really hurts in a certain area. We're really good at looking at feet because that's all we do, so we can work out pretty quickly. Yeah. Jeremy, would you take a would you take an X-ray for this sort of injury usually? Um, you can. Depends on um, when that sort of if they can recall the, that incident when mm -hmm. they had that sort of sudden pain. Um, depending on yeah when that occurred, sometimes it doesn't show up X-ray. Okay. So X-ray would be good. Just depends. Yeah, when. Um, yeah, timing's kind of crucial, but I guess we definitely tell you yeah. um, where um, exactly um, it is. Where it is. Yeah. If people come in straight away when the foot pain happens, sometimes the x-ray comes up with nothing, and um, but we can still be pretty, pretty sure of what it is based on the clinical symptoms. Um, usually by, we were just talking about this before, usually by weeks two, three, four, we start to see, I'll show, I'll show you on this. You see this second metatarsal here? This one here. So this here, right? This bit of cortical uh, irregularity, is some uh, lunacy there. So that's actually the bone starting to regrow. So if we were to actually look at where the stretch fracture was, it's sort of right in through this area here. So, but that takes a few weeks to, to show up. So most important thing is if you've been somewhere, got an x-ray, it doesn't show anything, doesn't mean it's not a stress fracture, it could still be. Um, and anyway, we can talk for hours about this, but we could then look at uh, another scan, like a, um, an MRI is probably the best, it gives the most information, yeah. Um, so treatment, so Jeremy, what what's your first thing you usually do when you, if you saw this on an x-ray or had a patient that you're very sure has a stress fracture, what would you do? So I'd probably put them in a moon boot, Oh, um, like like cost. Look yeah. These. Oh, oh. Right, convenient. Yeah. So right here. <laughs> yeah. Um, for how long do you think someone would wear that for? So, yeah, it depends on the fracture, but yeah, it could be six weeks to a couple of months. Yeah. 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 It really depends how bad it is and yeah. what's caused it. Some people can even just have a few weeks in that for it to settle and then transition to uh, some nice supportive footwear. Um, I know that I usually are transitioning people pretty quickly to, 
Because if you're getting a stress fracture, something is going wrong with the way your foot's working. You don't get a stress fracture unless there's too much load going through it. So normally we'd be looking at ways to prevent it from coming back again. You know, prevention's better than cure. You don't want to wear that moon boot every six months. We want to give the foot the support it needs to prevent the bending, particularly in these metatarsals because they're quite susceptible to it. So I know that we've both had lots of patients, but I'm thinking of patients that are working all day in a workshop in work boots, you know, walking around for 10 hour shifts, athletes that are going for running and that sort of thing. We'd always be looking at looking at uh, an orthotic to sort of support the foot and prevent, prevent the bending moments. So that's about, once we've got the healing phase started, we want to go to the preventative phase then as well. Um, what else should we talk about with stress fractures? I guess, is it ever necessary for surgery? Oh, uh, no, not yeah. necessarily. Not for these, not for these ones, yeah. There are certain bones where there can be need for um, a surgical fixation of some of them. Um, if you look at this little bone out the side here, the fifth metatarsal. Anyway, that's getting too in-depth. Um, but if you're having any of those issues, that's something that we can definitely help with. Well, that's been six minutes, so that's enough. Um, talking about stress fractures. Hopefully you found that useful. If you want more information, uh, you can have a look on our website. We do have a bit of detail on stress fractures and other fractures, uh, but really it's about giving you a customized treatment plan that's gonna help you, so come and see us. Thanks for watching. We'll talk again another day. Bye-bye. Right,